Rocket League, a game of its own kind these days. A game that constantly changes the playing field through unpredictable advances of the creative minds all around the world. Whether it be through new metas and mechanics created by those who play it, or through the new ranks and game modes made by the creators themselves, set to challenge those who broke the previous ceilings and have become bored with the same old, same old. The people who amaze us the most are the ones who seem to manipulate their cars with seemingly no effort, as if it's a direct extension of themselves. These are generally thought of as the professionals. But why then do we see ourselves and the people around us able to do the maneuvers that once shook the Rocket League community to its core? Why aren't we in that rank? able to make connections with the professional community and play in those tournaments. If we can do what they can, then why are we stuck in the rank that we are? Well, one answer to these questions comes in the form of adaptability. Well, kind of the opposite, but we'll get to that later. In Linda Besner's article, Why Being Too Adaptable Isn't Adaptive, she references a book called The Once and Future World by J.B. McKinnon and says this. He explores the effect of the shifting baseline. This is the idea that each generation notices only the environmental degradation that takes place during its own lifetime and therefore conditions worsen without us really knowing or remembering just how much better things used to be. And you might ask, what does this have to do with Rocket League? Relax, I'm getting there. I refer to this article because, although it refers to a different side of adaptability, it reveals an important concept of how our brains will react if only partially taught a certain skill. We are often taught from a young age that it is most important to be adaptable, and in a weak effort to teach the other half of adaptability, we are taught the first half of a certain famous phrase, a jack of all trades is a master of none. This unfortunately doesn't cut it, and the common result is people that only know how to adapt, but can't focus on just one thing. In Jim Heskett's article, So We Adapt, What's the Downside? He says this, Adaptability and commitment are complementary concepts, appropriate in different situations, over different time periods, and in response to different challenges. And this is why I said the opposite of adaptability adaptability is important. The best word I could think of to describe this opposite is rigidity. The pros you and I watch live or on YouTube have mastered both, only adaptability is the more obvious one. Why is it then when I play Rocket League at my own rank, things seem to go smoothly and it makes sense even when I lose, but when I play with somebody at a lower rank, I lose all ability to play the way I normally do, and it almost seems like a level playing field. The answer to that question is something I wish was as easy to do as it is to say. Rigidity. The ability to change the tides of a match relies almost solely on adaptability or so we thought. Really, the more I think of it, the more it seems to be almost more of a 50-50 relationship between the two. So you might be asking yourself, I've come all this way and I've gotten the reason as to why I may fail in those times I should find success easily. Well, you're right, but you won't like the answer. It's practice, or more appropriately, structured practice. So many people rely on their ability to learn a skill quickly that they forget that it still needs to be practiced hard and often. Just because you've learned a skill doesn't mean you get to move on. You have to constantly refine that skill. The best way to do this is to go back to the basics. Learn the basics. I can't say this enough. I will never respect one's ability to do a ceiling shot or a breezy flick if your rank doesn't reflect the skill level that shot is meant to show off. Having said that, I don't think that I'm exempt from this either. If I spent the same amount of time practicing the doomsday dish and the musty flick that I do on rotation and ground mechanics, I could be doing them non-stop. Honestly, things in the air are still my weakness. The only difference is that I'm finally committed to structure, to learn the basics, the skills that, from the deepest roots, lead into the other more flashy mechanics that are my goals to master. There has never been more improvement in my gameplay and my rank than when I practice the simplest training packs, the ones that make me shoot the ground shots as accurately as possible, or the ones that make me power shot into a specific part of the net. These things are pieces of advice I've given to friends and they've almost always come back to tell me that they were surprised that's all they needed. Not the complex, overly fast training packs that they thought would boost their learning speed because it was above their skill level. All in all, it is more important to start from the ground up than you might think. If you don't, you'll risk missing something that is or was integral to your learning curve. Something that, having missed it, will stunt your growth severely. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something today. This took quite a lot to put together, so if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks, and have a good one.